got everything you need. So we're on our way to Brockville right now. It's about a three hour drive from Toronto. We are doing a new renovation project for the Brockville Public Library, which I am super excited about. So come along with me. We're gonna show you all the details for today. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel here. And if you're not already, you can follow me on my Instagram and TikTok for all my daily updates on design at Mr. Phoenix Gray. So how did you start your day today? So I'm one of those crazy people that start at 4.30 a.m., wake up super early, I know, I know it's really weird. And I'm also not one of those people that drink coffee, so I just naturally am a weirdo. So I wake up at 4.30, I walk my beautiful dog, Rhea, because she is the only one that actually really gets me up early in the morning. Once I finish walking her, get back home, drop her off, and then I end up going to the gym for about an hour and a half. Came back, showered, uh, packed up everything I need to do to get ready and get in the car, and now we're on our way to Brockville. So how did you get the library as a client anyway? So funny story, they actually came from social media itself. The new appointed team for the Brockville Public Library, they followed me on TikTok, reached out to me, this was about a year ago to the state almost when they first contacted me. They reached out to me saying they had a government grant that they were going to put towards some new renovations that they wanted to bring into the library, update the space since it hasn't really been updated since 1995. So that's how they originally reached out to me. We got our contract together. So we are gonna have a few phases for this renovation. So this is just the first one to start. How would you recommend people getting clients of their own? Honestly, social media. If you are starting a business, you have a small business, or even if you have an existing one, putting your presence out online is free advertising. People want to come to you because they want to trust and believe in anything that you're putting forward in any kind of creative field in my instance. So being able to have that presence online is what has gifted me all these incredible clients from around the world that I typically wouldn't have had in any other situation. So my number one tip is have that social media presence, become a livable, lovable person that people understand and trust, and that's your portfolio right there. What kind of clients or projects do you typically like to work on the most? That's a tough one. I've worked on so many different projects that range from commercial and hospitality all the way to like the private sector with residential. Um, I would have to say my personal favorite projects are the commercial and hospitality spaces, working on restaurants and bars because there is so much more creativity and budget when it comes to expressing myself personally on a design, but also on a design level that the clients want to achieve a space that is so beautiful that invites people to come in, which is the complete opposite on the spectrum of working on a residential side. You're designing for a very particular person and design in mind, and you want to make that space feel intimate and safe for whoever you're actually designing it for versus designing for the masses. I would definitely say the commercial and hospitality side is my favorite, but I do have a special place in my heart for designing residential spaces because the interest because of the intimacy of designing a home for someone is so much more beautiful and the way that you connect with clients on such a personal level when you're designing their space to become a home is such an incredible feeling as a designer and there is nothing that matches to it. So we got about two hours more on this drive. I know it's super long. We're not gonna take you along for the whole ride, but I cannot wait to show you what the existing library looks like when we get there, give you a complete tour of it, and I'm gonna talk about all the new things that we're gonna do. Can you show me what you bring on a site visit? What don't I bring on a site visit? <laughs> um, first of all, my iPad. I cannot leave anywhere now. I am so spoiled. Give me the iPad. The fact that all my programs I can have, take pictures, put them up on the program, draw them all out, include all the measurements, makes site visits an absolute breeze when it comes to actually doing the measurements and keeping everything that I need when I actually get back home to the office to do the line drawings. 
I like to be as green as possible, but you know, sometimes you just need to bring the actual floor plans with you. I'm a very tactile person when it comes to actually doing my drawings. So before I do anything on my iPad, I will always sketch them out. Any of the line works, any notes that I include on it will always be on my hand drafted ones before I actually transition onto the iPad and do all the work on the computer. Every designer knows you need the biggest possible measuring tape when it goes to sites, especially if you have a large formulated plan that you're doing. This still doesn't cut it. I ended up not bringing my laser level or my lasering measuring tape because most of the work I was doing was all exterior. So we definitely had to use the measuring tape for it. I'm thankfully tall enough when it comes to actually doing a lot of the measurements that we needed height wise, because we're going to be doing a lot of exterior elevations. We need to provide all of those for permit and this will never do you dirty. And of course, everyone makes fun of me for my notepad because you gotta be a bougie bitch sometimes. And this was my first purchase when I started my business because I was like, when I bring this in, this is going to be the deal breaker. If you take notes in this, you're a badass. And the greatest thing about it, you don't have to buy the Louis Vuitton notepads. Muji perfectly fits 17 bucks. You can't go wrong. Okay, so for what we're doing here on the exterior of the Brockville Library, we're actually going to enclose this entire space. This is gonna become usable storage for the interior, so this is be completely weatherproofed. So that's going to be this carport renovation as part of it. The original drop box, which is around the side of the carport, we're actually going to relocate into the staff locker room along the side of the wall. We also want to include a really nice mural wall option for out here for local artists to have something to really bring some extra artistic flair to the exterior side of the building. And that's gonna be this side here, which is going to be part of the complete renovation. And then for the new staff entrance, we're gonna do some new doors around there. Otherwise it's gonna stay pretty much the existing same for this location. But where the big renovation is gonna happen is going to be in the front. So this is gonna be the biggest part of the renovation here. This exterior part where we're actually gonna build a deck, which is access to the second floor off the incline. This used to be the original entrance to the Brockville Library back in the 80s. It's been completely removed and closed off and turned into a planter, just kind of a setup that's been completely unusable. We are going to completely change it out so we have a full operational deck with access to the side and from the second level. In phase two, we're possibly going to have a cafe on the inside on the second floor so that it's going to have perfect access with a really great view outside on the deck for the second part of this phase. This should work perfectly because we can line it up with the columns so we can hide exactly. it all in anyways. Desk as it is right now is going to be slightly reconfigured. Okay. Oh, I'm going to oh, email amazing. it. Then. Measurements if you want exact measurements. So right now for this carport, we need the measurements because we're gonna build in an overall entire enclosure for it so it doesn't have access, so it'll be more private storage. So we're just taking the overall measurements for here for what we'll need for the actual metal work for what's gonna be included. The one thing I remember about small towns is they always have incredible fish and chips growing up in a small town by the water. That's the one thing they're known for. So we stopped at Dawn's. I'm so excited for this, I'm starving. So we had a phenomenal site visit today. It went way better than expected. I got all the measurements, everything I needed to start doing all the detailed drawings. And now we got a four hour drive ahead of us, which is super long, so I'm not gonna bring you along for that. But that is the end of the day. If you liked this vlog, make sure you like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you aren't following me on Instagram and TikTok, it's at Mr. Phoenix Gray. And if you're ever second guessing yourself, just think, what would Design Daddy do?